Hi everyone, Dr. Tom O'Brien, and it says I'm live, so I'm going to assume this thing is working. Um, hello, uh, you know, there's always something to talk to you, which is great. Uh, 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 I hooked up the laptop, I got really good reception. Find the screen on the laptop to do Facebook Live. So I'm laughing away and said, oh my God, all right, so I'm, I'm on my phone and hopefully the reception will be good. And, uh, oh, I see Mark's here. Hi, Mark. And, uh, oh, my wife is joining. The phone keeps slipping. I got to stop this phone from slipping. Let me put a pen there and see if that helps. Hi, honey. Uh, my wife's in Dublin, and uh, I'm here in California. We just both got back. We just spent a week in Brazil, and I was lecturing in Brazil and Sao Paulo. And um, audiences all over the world really love this information, you know, about autoimmunity and wheat sensitivity and things like that. So it was really a great experience to be there. Um, let me know when you're, where you're from when you um, uh, send a hello over here. Uh, Hubert's in New York, hello Hubert, and Michelle from Michigan, hello Michelle, thank you so much. Today's topic is on brain foods, foods that feed your brain. And um, uh, you know, my new book comes out uh, in May of next year, it's called Fix Your Body, Fix Your Brain. And so much of the book is about uh, uh, making better choices in your environment. And the most important component of the environment in terms of our health and the impact on our health, the most important part of the environment is food. What's on the end of your fork? There's nothing more potent than what's on the end of your fork. I'm putting a couple of pens here to keep this phone from slipping. Uh, there we go. Um, hello from oh, Adrian in San Diego. Hello, Lori in San Diego, Teresa in Texas, Karen in Ontario, uh, Arbor from Kosovo. Hello, Arbor. Thank you so much for joining. And Adriana from Mexico. Hello, Adriana. Oh, it was very cool. Thank you. People all over the world. It's really great. It's really great. So foods for your brain. Um, you know, I have a slide that I use in many of my presentations, and I didn't know if I was going to talk about this, but I am. Um, it's a picture, it's a round, uh, uh, a glass dome. It's his actual hand, you know, and his finger. And just the bones. And Galileo bequeathed, in his will that all of his inventions could be on display for all of posterity, as long as they also displayed his finger. Oh, we've got, uh, hiya, hiya, Barbara. And Chris from upstate New York, thanks. Bonnie in Chicago, thanks. Um, Galileo's finger. Uh, it was Galileo's middle finger, right? And it was his last message to the church for how they tried to suppress him through his whole life. And there's a interesting book on it. If you go to Amazon, type in Galileo's face. Um, uh, what's on the end of your fork? Hunger on one end and good food on the other. Oh, thanks. If there's one thing that time ago, I tell the attendees, you know, I've sat where you are so many times, hundreds of times over the years. And if it's a good presenter, interesting information, I'm writing notes furiously. I'm just writing away, writing away. And, uh, read this study, um, try this with this patient, order this vitamin C, you know, whatever it should be. And then you get back to the office, on, you spend thousands of dollars to fly to some city, uh, register for the seminar, pay for the hotels and all the meals and away from the family. And, you know, you get back on Monday morning, there's no time to implement any of it. And, you know, the, the audience will laugh, say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. There's just so much good information. How do you implement it? So I came up with this concept. If there's one thing, just one thing that I remember, someone from Quebec, uh, let's see, Gamsel, oh, yes, and uh, Dominique from Quebec, hello. Uh, if there's one thing that I learned in that weekend that I implement for the rest of my life in my professional career, it's worth going to. So if, if there's one thing from today that you walk away with, that's how I'm looking at this. You know, if there's one suggestion that really resonates for you, that you start doing and it's just part of your routine for the rest of your life, 
This was of value for you today. This 30 minutes was really of value for you today. So uh, uh, I'm not going to give you a bunch of us that hopefully one of them will resonate with you or many of them will resonate with you. So foods for your brain. What are good foods for your brain? Well, the first thing to think about is what to avoid. And you want to avoid foods that cause more inflammation. Brain deterioration, brain dysfunction, as far as I know, all of them are inflammatory conditions. Your brain's on fire. It just depends. This is a cerebellum. So the first rule of thumb is stop throwing gasoline on the fire. You know, French fries every once in a while, it's not a big deal. Really? Really? Those terrible fats called transformed fatty acids, you eat an order of French fries, sorry to tell you this, and I really like French fries. I, I'm kind of a sucker for those truffle French fries things. But you eat uh, an order of French fries, those transformed fatty acids stay in your blood for 57 days. 57 days of these bad fats in your blood. Now, your brain cells are made up, the walls of the brain cells are made up of fats, okay? They're made up of fats. The, the way your brain cells communicate with each other is, I'm going to date myself here. You know, when you go to the doctor's office, that um, you go to the bathroom to get Susan in the wall, you put it on the shelf, and then it rolls around the um, uh, test. Working. Am I still working here? It says I'm live, but can you guys throw me a couple of hearts or something if this, if our connection is good and we're working okay? Can you let me know? Lynn from Adelaide, South Australia. You've started the stewed apples. Oh, I see. Thumbs up. Thank you so much. And the hearts. Oh, thank you. So it is working. Uh, and Lynn found a difference in her gut in the first week. Way to go, Lynn. Thank you so much. Felicia, yeah, yeah, Felicia, 57 days. 57 days. Now, this is how important this is. So you go to the doctor, you go in the bathroom, you leave a urine sample, it, you put on the Lazy Susan, it swings around to the other room, the nurse does whatever test they were going to do. That chemicals in one brain cell have to go to the next brain cell and get modified, some chemicals added to it, then to the next brain cell that goes from one brain cell to another brain cell to another brain cell to the neurons and just straight down the nerve. But it's a lazy Susan type of messaging system from one cell to the other, okay? That's how our brains work. That's how all our nerves work. Now, your brains 40% of the brain structure of the brain, you know, the outer circle of a brain. You know, if you think a cell is circular, and some of them are, some of them aren't, but just imagine the circle. The outer circle of the brain cell is made up of fats. So what happens when you eat a bunch of bad fats? Mrs. Patient, you have an entire new body every seven years. Every seven years. Some cells regenerate very quickly, like the inside lining of your gut every three to five days. Some cells are really slow, like bone cells. But you have a whole new body every seven years. Those cells use the same kind of cell you have, right? So when you have your brain cells, and you, you, when you make new cells, You've got to have the raw material there in the bloodstream in order to, to build the new cells. So if you're eating bad fats, saturated fats, you make your brain cells out of bad fats. What happens when you make your brain cells out of bad fats? Your lazy Susans get rusty. They don't rotate to the other room very easily. So the messages from one brain cell to another brain cell drive the car. It's not backing out very well. It's not moving the way it should. Turns out you had the emergency brake on, right? Uh, oh, uh, my honey tells me that the Wi-Fi isn't working very well. So hang on a minute here. I'm going to just check and see if I can get, and I'm back with you. Am I there? Can you see me guys? Um, send me a few hearts or something. If you can see me, I should be on a, uh, Janet, yes, I know it's stopping. Uh, my wife just sent me that message, and so hopefully it's fixed. Now, can you guys see me? 
Can I get some hearts? Can I get some? Now it stopped altogether. Can you see me now? Can you see me now? Tell me again if you can see me. Uh, give me a couple of hearts. Oh, let's see. Let's see here. You are frozen, frozen, frozen. Oh, the hearts are back. This is really great. Please redo some sometime. Loving your book, Felicia. You pause it. Just reconnect when you're done with Wi-Fi. Make sure you do. Oh, I'm back. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, thanks, Shirley. Yes, I'm back. Uh, okay, so I'm back. Good. Okay, much better. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, good. I'm going to assume this is working now. Oh, it's nice to see the hearts. It means you guys are out there. You know, it's really weird talking to a phone. Uh, you know, just, and I'm looking at myself, talking to myself. Hello from Syracuse. You're coming in clear. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Okay. So when your diet is full of bad fats, you make your brain cells out of bad fats. It's the raw material that your body's got to work with. When you make your brain cells out of bad fats, your lazy Susans get rusty. When your lazy Susans get rusty, the communication doesn't work very well between brain cells. Let's see if we get this a little better there. There we go. When the communication doesn't work too well between brain cells, you're a jerk. You say things that you don't really mean to say. You're not thinking properly. You're in a brain fog. You know, your kids don't do good in school. They're diagnosed with attention deficit. There are studies that show when you give your kids fish oils a few months down the road, their IQs are going up. They're functioning better in school. When mothers who take fish oils during pregnancy, their children tend to have higher IQs at ages seven and eight than the mothers whose children, than the mothers who did not take fish oils during pregnancy. It's because the raw materials to build the cells are better cells. Your lazy Susans are moving the way that they should be, right? So the, the, the membranes, the walls of your brain cells are made up of the good fats. They're called the omega-3s. And one omega-3 in particular called DHA is the main one. Uh, Carla from North Dakota, thank you. Missy, Rusty Lazy Susan. Yes, that's right. Hi, Missy. Uh, um, so um, I want to talk about, so that's kind of the basics of why we want the foods we eat is so are so important for our brain is because it's the membranes one component is the membranes have to be able to communicate better so you you, you want lazy susans that are really smooth and easy right so what are the foods and that's what we're going to focus on today is the foods that are higher in the omega-3s higher in the good fats of course everyone knows about fish Everyone does, uh, but the uh, uh, I got a couple of surprises for you on this one. Uh, so it's always good. Cold water fish tends to have higher amounts of the omega threes, the good fats, the good fats. But we've got some real winners, some real scores for you. Ah, Marzi has just posted the continuation uh, of the uh, uh, of this talk that. Uh, for those of you who just joined, like Kathy just joined. Hi, Kathy. Um, uh, I had a bad connection, so I switched wireless. Now I have a, bad, a better connection. So let's talk about the fishes. So um, DHA, EPA, DHA are the omega-3s. DHA is the omega-3 that's really good for the brain. So is EPA, but DHA is really the most important one. And we know cold water fish is high in um, the good fats. Uh, but... There are a couple that are real winners. I'm going to, some of you have heard me say before about vital choice seafoods. Vital choice seafoods are remarkable. It's a company, my friend Randy Hartnell owns the company. And Randy um, was a salmon fisherman. And he realized maybe 20 years ago that, you know what? The whole world needs to know about how good this food is. So there were a few families that got together. They, put, they pulled the, the catch from their boats 
and Randy started marketing online. Uh, frozen fish and canned fish, and they are the best that I've ever found anywhere, and the safest and the cleanest. It's Vital Choice Seafoods. So, and uh, I'm going to tell you a few of their products, and they were so kind. I just called them a half hour ago, and Randy was kind enough to answer the phone. I called him on his cell phone, told him what I was doing. He said, Randy, tell me about a couple of your products. And he gave me the numbers that I'd heard before, but I'd forgotten. And then uh, I asked him, well, so do you want to give me an incentive or something for people to try your stuff? And he said, sure. Why don't you give them um, the, uh, the DR-17? The DR-17 is the code to use and you get a 15% discount on anything you order from them. And I, th I thought it was really nice. Nice way to try, you know, to try their products and see. So uh, the DR-17. Canned salmon. Of course, fresh salmon's always the best, and uh, I order their frozen salmon. We've, uh, we've got 15, 20 salmon steaks in the freezer, so anytime I want salmon, it's there. You know, I actually put some in the refrigerator to thaw today. That's how you thaw frozen salmon, put it in the refrigerator. Don't put it at room temperature, put it in the refrigerator to let it thaw. And uh, so I'll have it tonight for dinner. Uh, uh, let's see, what if you're allergic to fish? The fish oils are fine for you to take, the supplements you can take. Uh, most people can when they have, because the allergy response is to the proteins, not the fats. So if you can't eat fish for some reason, and some people have a sensitivity, and that's a whole nother world that we can't talk about today, but the fish oil supplements would be great for you. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you about three canned products, canned fish. Uh, I grew up on tuna fish. And uh, back in that day, you know, it was fine to eat. And in when my son was little, my son had recurrent anemias. And I couldn't figure out why. What the heck's going on here? Turned out he had elevated levels of antibodies to his blood, some components in his blood. And I said, where is this coming from? Turned out that he had high mercury levels. Mercury, where is this coming from? And then I realized, now this was back in 1987, 1988, where the topic of mercury contamination in the fish was really just starting to become more known. Today we know that all tuna, uh, until you'll learn that's not true anymore, but all tuna is loaded with mercury. Unfortunately, it's true, uh, but there's an exception that I'll tell you today. But back then we didn't, and my son's treat was uh, uh, tuna fish sandwiches. He just loved tuna fish, and he ate it many days a week, many, many days a week. Well, um, so I got the mercury out of his body, his anemia went away, uh, he never had anemia again and all that, but he really, we didn't feed him tuna fish anymore. Um, but the canned salmon, I'm going to talk about canned salmon first, and then I'll go to the canned tuna fish. The canned salmon, these numbers are just jaw dropping. Now, most supplements, when you get supplements or vitamins of the good fats that are called the omega threes, most supplements are somewhere between 500, 800 is a really good supplement of omega threes. Uh, and that'll be broken into the EPA and DHA. So three to 500, that's usual. Uh, the really big horse capsules can be up to 1,000 milligrams of the good fats. And that's what I take, I've taken for years, is I take about 3,000 a day, usually, when I remember, sometimes I forget, but usually. Listen to this. In their standard sockeye salmon, in a can of sockeye salmon, it's 2,200 milligrams of total omega-3s, 900 of the EPA, which is really good as an anti-inflammatory, and 1,200 of the DHA, which is really good for your brain. So when you have the canned salmon, their standard sockeye salmon, you're getting like two to three capsules, horse capsules, of really good fats for your brain every time every time. Now, I forgot to tell you this earlier, that when you take in enough of the good fats, 
they push out the bad fats in your brain. Why? Because you're rebuilding every cell. And when you build the new cells, the new cells are made with the good fats. So the lazy Susans, after a while, start moving better because more of the cells are made of the good fats and not the bad fats, right? You just want to replace. And there, I saw a study in the Journal of the American Medical Association a number of years ago that showed that when you take the good fats, you actually secrete and get rid of the bad fats that pushes them out. So that's a very cool thing. So uh, that's the first one is the standard sockeye. The second one is called red tresca, R-E-D-T-R-E-S-C-A, red tresca. And it's the caviar of canned salmon. It's really good, really tasty. And one can of this salmon has 4,527 milligrams of total omega-3s, of which 2,286 are DHA, the fats for the brain. So when you eat this canned salmon, the red tresca, you're getting four, uh, uh, 2,286 milligrams of DHA. That's like three horse capsules of DHA. Just pure DHA. It's just great for your brain and your kids' brains. It's great for them. And here's the third one that I thought was very cool. Very, very cool. It's called Ventresca. V-E-N-T-R-E-S-C-A. And these are all from uh, Vital Choice Seafoods. Ventresca is canned tuna fish. Stopped eating tuna fish years ago because of the mercury content. All, all tuna has mercury. Except Randy figured this out, uh, the owner of Vital Choice. He figured this out. What did he figure out? He said, Tom, you know, when we catch salmon in uh, fish, you know, in the nets and all that, sometimes baby tuna get caught. They kind of swim together. No one had any use for the baby tuna. They just throw them back, you know. But I started thinking about that. Randy started thinking about that. And he said, you know what, let's check, take the belly of the baby tuna. What he found is that it's almost non-existent for mercury because the baby tuna haven't had enough time to accumulate all the mercury that adult tunas accumulate. They just haven't had the time. So they haven't accumulated the mercury in them. So when you get ventresca, it's the belly of the baby tuna. Very, very low in mercury. I eat it. I think it's really safe. I, I don't hesitate at all in, in recommending it to our patients. And listen to the numbers on the Ventresca. 7,000 milligrams of total omega-3s per can, of which 4,860 is DHA. 4,680. That's like taking six horse capsules of EPA DHA. That's how much of the good fats for your brain you get from one of the little cans of tuna fish. So moms out there, you can use Ventresca for your kids. I'd give it to them like maybe once or twice a week because it's a little more expensive than the canned tuna fish you can buy at the local supermarket that's full of mercury. It is a little more expensive. So once or twice a week, you give them this, you know you're giving them a really healthy dose of DHA, the good fats for the brain, so that their brain cells can communicate much better, much, much better. So that's it on the fish. Of course, all cold water fish are good for you in terms of their omega-3s. Uh, but these three from Vital Choice, the canned seafoods, that makes it easy and convenient. And you can do all kinds of different recipes with them. Uh, uh, these are just so high. And I, I was startled when I saw the numbers. So it's Vital Choice Seafoods. And Marzi will post. And the code to use is the DR, the doctor, 17. And that's for the year 2017. So the DR 17. And you get a 15% discount on anything you want to try. So give that a try. Now, what else besides fish? That's the first and most important and the obvious one. But what's next? Coconuts. Coconut milk. Coconut oil. Why? There's a type of fat called medium chain triglycerides, MCTs. 
just go to Google and type in MCTs and Alzheimer's. And you'll see the studies that come up that show when you have adequate amounts of the MCT oils, you reduce your risk and the symptoms of Alzheimer's dramatically. Lots of studies on this. So how can you use coconut oil? Well, I do it two ways. The first way is I have a container of coconut oil in the shower and it's called oil pulling. And I just take a scoopful of the oil, put it in my mouth, and when I'm like doing my hair and all that or whatever, you know, I'm going like that, just swish, 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 swish. I'm trying to suck it between the teeth and around the gums and all that. And uh, Joe Mercola, Dr. Mercola on his website, mercola.com, he's got a whole thing on oil pulling and coconut oil. He does it for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, I read that and I said, what? If I do it for a minute, I'm happy. So I'm sure the more you do is better and Dr. mccola has got some evidence for that and I fully agree with him, but I'm happy that I'm at least getting it done. So I'm gonna to say to you, and it might be my limitations in the recommendation, but just do it for what you can, you know, just scoop, uh, get a scoop of the oil, um, swish it around in there for as long as you can. And you can read Mercola's site to see why he does it for so long. Yes, MCT oil is the best form of coconut oil for the brain, uh, if it's pure. Uh, uh, so that's another way that you can take it is by my friend Dave Asprey and his whole Bulletproof Coffee recipe puts MCT oil in the coffee and with some butter and then blends it. You have to blend it, you gotta foam it up. And it's good, I like it, I like the taste of it. Uh, but I don't use the MCT oil personally very often, but I no reason why not. I think it's a, a beneficial thing to do. The other thing with coconut oil and what I do is I use coconut cream. And I got, you know, I wanted to show you guys this because I was using canned things, you know, canned coconut creams. And, uh, and then I read the ingredients and there's gums in there. There's, a, there's just a bunch of crap in there. And it's unfortunate. Then I found this one. This is Let's Do Organic is the name of the company. And you can get this at Thrive Market. Uh, Thrive Market is a great site to go to and we're gonna send you a link. Honey, let's put a link on here for Thrive Market. I'm supposed to tell the staff ahead of time all this stuff and I never remember to. But we'll have the link here if you come back to listen to this later or Marzi will post it as soon as she can pull it up so that you can go to Thrive Market uh, and with the link and uh, uh, um, they'll know you came from us which is great because then they give us more deals in the future to give you offerings like uh, Vital Choice just did. So Marzi, you'll have to get the link from Karen and then uh, send it over. Uh, but this one is just pure, heavy coconut cream. And you'll find ways of using this. What I do with it is that I put it in my coffee. Uh, so, and it's just pure coconut cream. There's nothing else added to it, a little bit of water. And it goes in my coffee. Um, instead of MCT oil. You could do both and you can throw butter in there also if you want to, but I get a little of that every day and I'm oil pulling every day. And uh, Marzi makes this wonderful, wonderful dessert, which I haven't had for a while, hint, hint. hint. And that is uh, chia seeds. She soaks chia seeds in coconut milk or coconut water. No, no, it's the milk. Honey, we'll post the recipe on that, okay? It's a great, great dessert and your kids will love it. And Marzi will write how to do it for you. Uh, but chia seeds themselves are high in omega-3s, the good fats for you. Uh, uh, so ch this chia seed dessert is chia seeds and coconuts and then some pureed fruit in there and it's to die for. And it's very healthy for you and it tastes wonderful. It's really a nice, nice treat. Uh, is there a carogeny in the coconut? No, no, uh, there is not. This is just coconut and water. That's why I'm showing you the can. Let's do organic, it's at Thrive Market. And we'll post the link for you. Please use the link we send you because then Thrive Market sees, oh look, the doctor.com is sending all these patients over there uh, or buyers for our products. Oh good, then they'll give me a better deal for you. I didn't think to call them ahead of time for today, uh, but I will in the future. Uh, uh, so please consider, wait for the link that Marzi will post for you. So chia seeds. The next thing I use 
good fats for the brain, food for the brain, is when I make a smoothie, which I like to do, um, I will use uh, chia seeds. I, I, I get a, um, a coffee grinder. You know, I've got two coffee grinders on our countertop. One's for coffee and the other is for spices and seeds. Anytime I'm putting spices in something I'm cooking, I pour the spices in the grinder and then throw them in there because you break open the walls and so you get more of the flavors there, right? So with seeds, I use uh, 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 sesame seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, and flax seeds. Put them in the grinder, grind them up. I'll give you the, and then you throw them in your smoothie. Why? Because they're full of really good fats for you and enzymes and fiber and some prebiotic. So it's great to add some seeds to your diet every day. And when you grind them in a coffee grinder, you kind of activate them. You make them more accessible to your digestive tract right away. And to confess, I also throw poppy seeds in there because I like the taste of poppy seeds and I miss my poppy seed muffins that I don't have anymore. I don't eat muffins anymore. Um, so I'll put those five types of seeds in there, grind them up and throw them in a smoothie. And um, that's uh, another way to get more brain foods. So what have we talked about? First thing, stop throwing gasoline on the fire. You have to identify the foods and things that are causing inflammation and then to rebuild healthier brain cells. That's what I want to talk about today is those membranes around the cell. There's other things that we will talk about in the future about how to build more nerve hormones called neurotransmitters. What are the foods for all that? But for today, it's how to build the membranes, how to get Lazy Susans back again so that your brain can communicate better. Um, and uh, Vital Choice is just a tremendous service that they're doing. And we really want to support them because they're really good people. They've got pure intent. They're trying to keep their prices as fair as possible and make a living at what they're doing. Uh, so I really am proud to support them. So with all of that, uh, let's see, I'll just take a look at a couple of the questions here. I use flax seeds and use a coffee grinder. They go rancid if you don't. Oh, thank you, Linda. I forgot to say that. If you buy ground flax seeds, so I'll, I'll just buy the ground stuff. You can't do that. Why? Try this test. Buy flax seeds. I like golden flax seeds, but I don't have any science reason behind that. Try golden or try flax seeds. Put them in the grinder. Grind them up. Take some and taste them. Okay, it doesn't taste bad, but leave some in the grinder. Wait four hours, and you know you put them in a dish or something and cover them so that they're not just exposed to the air. And then put some fresh seeds in the grinder, grind them up, taste the fresh seeds, and then taste the leftover ground up seeds from four hours ago. And you'll see the ones four hours, oh, they taste different. Oh, wow. Wow, they really taste different. The oils have gone rancid already. So when you buy the previously ground flax seed, you're buying rancid oils. And there are many benefits to flax flax, ground flax seeds. It's used in cooking, it's got uh, uh, fiber, it's a prebiotic. There are many good things, but it's also rancid oils. Grind them yourself, grind them fresh. So thank you, uh, uh, person, I don't remember her name, who wrote that in there. What if you keep ground flax seeds in the freezer? Well, try it yourself. Just grind some fresh, taste them, and then bring some out from the freezer and taste those. You'll see that uh, uh, freezing will slow down the degradation process, but as soon as they get exposed to oxygen, when you've ground them up and now they're exposed to oxygen, it starts the oxidative response. And you put them in the freezer, it's gonna take a few hours for them to freeze. So how much oxidation has occurred during that time when the seeds are still freezing? You know, how long does it take for the oil to freeze? I don't know, and it's, I, I would rather, uh, Take the minute or two, no, it doesn't even take a minute. It takes 15 seconds. Throw them in the coffee grinder, and then you've got them. Okay, what other questions? What's the difference between coconut cream and coconut milk? Even at Whole Foods, I can only find coconut milk. I know, I know. That's why if you guys haven't uh, uh, tried Thrive Market, Thrive Market 
is where Whole Foods meets Amazon meets Costco. So their prices are cheaper and they're a very conscious company. They formed about four years ago to really give you a uh, uh, better uh, source and access to foods that you, you can afford for your family. If you can afford to buy Jiffy peanut butter, you can afford to buy organic peanut butter from Thrive Market. It's the same. So, and we'll give you the link for that. And the difference between coconut milk and coconut cream, uh, cream is thicker, that's all I can tell you. I don't know how, how they did that. I'm sorry, I, I really don't know that one. The ingredients in the coconut cream is organic heavy coconut cream, organic coconut and filtered water. That's it. That's all that's in there. I don't know how they make the cream out of it instead of just coconut uh, milk. I don't know. I wish I could tell you, but I don't know. I would assume they just extra, they concentrate it, but I don't know. Uh, Emmy Cox Thurman says, Trader Joe's carries organic coconut oil and cream. Great. Read the label. Make sure there's no gums in there. Uh, the gums, you, you make antibodies to the gums. They can trigger autoimmunity and lots of other problems. Uh, uh, so uh, just make sure that it's as pure as, um, as you can get. Uh, Polly asks, smoothies, can they be made warm? Sure, sure. As long as you're going to drink them now. Yeah, sure. All right, folks. Uh, I've gone a little over time, I think. What, where are we? Oh, just 30, 40 minutes. Okay. Well, uh, it's always a pleasure with you. If you would um, leave us some comments about what you think about this. Is this working for you? Uh, I know the internet connection could be better. I'm sorry. I'm kind of a cluster at this. Uh, and I'll, we'll, we'll do better. But if this is working for you, let us know, please. And please share this. It's very cool when I see after um, a week that uh, there may have been 2,000 people that watch this, but a week from now, it's 18,000 people. So thank you very much for sharing this. That's one way that you can pay it forward in the world is to let people know about this. And the other thing you can do, shameless plug, shameless plug, tell them about my book. And if you haven't got my book yet, please get it and read it. It's a paradigm shift when you read this. It's a paradigm shift. People understand health at a different level. So thank you all very much. Much love to you. Oh, thanks for all the hearts. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.